we're here today with Bill Elwell. Tell me about SPG Solar and what the mission of SPG Solar is in the industry right now. So SPG Solar has been around since 2001, and it's always been our mission to help deploy solar energy technology um, through working with our clients, making sure that they understand the technology, providing them the lowest cost solutions. We have an EPC division, we have an operations and maintenance division, um, we do structured finance to help provide financing to um, our clients and our users, and uh, we also have a products division, which one of our products is our proprietary single access tracker. Okay, so you're at the show today, you're actually kind of releasing this as far as promoting the, the yeah. tracker. So tell me a little bit about the tracking system. Sure, so the tracking system was developed in 2005 by our founder, Dan Thompson, and it was developed at a time only for our own EPC company to use uh, in an effort to make high-cost panels produce more throughout their life. So that was a way to make our EPC division more, um, give them a competitive adv advantage. Uh, and about a year ago, we realized that there's a lack of uh, single access trackers in the market, and it was a very, a very good business opportunity for us to take the product outside of our own EPC division. And we've since lost, launched our racking solutions division. And what does this solve? What, what, what need in the marketplace, what hole in the marketplace did you see that really this technology really addresses? So by, by tracking the panels from east to west throughout the day, you're increasing the production of these panels by up to 25%, depending on the location. Now what that solves is it makes a, makes a project, project return on investment work. Whereas a fixed tilt system, you know, a return on investment might not pencil out, but by adding 10% or so cost to that system with a single axis tracker and getting 25% more production, typically a return on investment is going to work a lot better with the single axis tracker. Well, and in the past, now with prices dropping, mm -hmm and everybody's starting to get their antenna up about whether solar is cost effective, either on the residential, the commercial, or the utility scale, uh -huh. it would seem that every little bit of percentage yeah. that you can increase is gonna make a difference on either the buying, purchasing decision, mm -hmm. or the lifetime decision of, of it using it. Exactly, so there's two main drivers in return on investment. That's uh, system cost coming down, and production and efficiency going up. So system costs is the panel manufacturers, the racking manufacturers, the balance of system, the installers, they've all done their job over the last two or three years by getting the cost down. Panels alone are 40% down last year. So now it's the, it's the engineers, the designers, the racking providers, it's their turn to help drive up production. And a single axis tracker with 25% more production over a fixed tilt system is one crucial way of doing that. This type of system, is it mainly for utility scale type of installations or does it have other? Yeah, it's mainly for uh, anywhere from small commercial, mid-sized commercial to large utility scale solar plants, hundreds of megawatts, down to probably 250 to 500 kilowatts systems. Anything much smaller than that, then it's probably not quite right. And where does this really address, I mean, what geographically, where does this really now bring solar into the equation? So what's interesting is geographically we've designed the system to work anywhere. So anytime you're looking at a system or an area with high electricity cost, a single axis tracker is going to be the way to go. Our system is rated to 155 mile per hour wind zones. It can be built in high snow loads. Uh, as you can see from the picture, we have a system installed in Mammoth Lakes, California. Um, 30 pound snow loads there. But anywhere you have high electricity cost and high insulation, a single axis tracker is going to be a great way to go. The uh, Puerto Rican, uh, Dominican, they have very high electricity cost and great sun. So a single axis tracker is a, is a very, very viable option there. Does it, take it, uh, does it take it also into, say, more northern or southern extremes in terms of latitudes and that, that ability to track? Now, now brings it, you know, a fixed mm -hmm. system would only see the sun at a certain number of hours. Yeah, yeah. So kind of the old way of thinking is a is anything above 40 degrees north latitude a tracking system really isn't going to work um, but now because the costs are down because they work in higher snow loads um, it's making more and more sense to work in higher uh, latitudes southern latitudes are always going to be more beneficial especially with a horizontal single axis tracker like this because as you go lo lower in latitude the sun is apparent position is much higher in the sky so as it's flat and turning east and west the direct uh, incidence angle of the sun is much is much more apparent. The 40% you mentioned earlier in the last year, yeah. I mean, that's got to have been generating a huge buzz in the, in the industry and in the companies like yourselves yeah. in terms of 
you know, what's it going to mean to really the development in the next few years, this goal of, you know, getting away, from, having to get away from the subsidies and, and things like that in by 2015 that the, that the industry has. Yeah, and what's, what's really interesting about that is we're really close to um, having a system, a, a package for um, business owners where it can be financially viable without any incentives, with just the 30% tax cut. We're probably a few cents away from making that happen. Um, and the, really the only way we can do it is with the single axis tracker. Fixed tilt systems, we're still 20 or 30 cents away from making that happen. So that's the ultimate goal, is to get to that point where we won't rely on government subsidies. Does this system uh, decrease installation time or change anything in terms of the actual construction of a, of a, of a system? Sure. Um, it increases. I'd say the time doesn't increase, but the man hours may increase a little bit. But in that 10% cost, total cost of increase, that's included in there. When I say that number, that's the balance of system cost that might be added. That's the extra man hours, which is pretty minimal. That's the extra cost for the racking solution, the steel itself. Um, that 10% is all included in there. Okay. But then you still you end up with a 25 percent more. So it's a net gain. That's yeah. A net gain of 25%. Yeah. Now, panels have a lifetime. What about the the the, 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 the uh, tracking system itself? Sure. Does it exceed the panel lifetimes? Well, it's all hot dip galvanized steel, all done in the factory. Our system has no field welding, no cutting. It's all cut to size. Bolted connections are all. There's no pre-drilling, none of that. So it's all galvanized in the field, and um, with a 25 plus year lifetime. So um, it's really going to last or outlast the panels themselves. All right. So tell me a little, if you could, just to wrap up, tell me a little bit about some of the projects that SBG is now looking at getting into you know, mm -hmm. using this system. Yeah, so by developing the system the way we've developed it, it's really opened up a lot of markets, both within our country and outside of our country. Um, the Dominican is a huge market right now. Puerto Rico has some of, you know, there's hundreds of megawatts being developed right now. And in Hurricane Alley, there's really, it was never a, an option to use trackers before. Now we're seeing almost all of them are going in as trackers, and we're certainly looking into those markets. All right, thank you, Bill. Well, Appreciate great. your time today, and uh, good luck with the launch of this new system. Great, thanks, Kevin.